Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace, and today we are talking with Mark Simmons from Free Jam. He's the CEO and director. Uh, we're talking to him about GameCraft. This is the third video of three videos of our interview together. The first video we talked about the journey of Free Jam uh, into making GameCraft. Uh, the second video, uh, Mark responds to critics of Robocraft, and in this video, uh, Mark is going to take a deeper dive into upcoming features of GameCraft and also give us an inside look at team meetings. So here's Mark. So back to GameCraft, is there anything that has uh, surprised you um, during the development of GameCraft, either in how players have reacted or what they built or um, just how things have progressed? Um, I think one of the big surprises for me so far is how quickly users understand really complicated things and how to exploit them. Like um, play, the players are surprising us all the time. Obviously, creativity the, the the different players have and the different ways that they apply their creativity. Because it's so unique to each of the people in the community, how they how they are creative. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why I think one of these developing this type of game is so enjoyable from a game developer's point of view. Mm -hmm. Because when you see the creations that people make with our game, it, it's absolutely joyful for us. We're regularly posting internally videos of creations people have made and we're going oh my god how has he even done that and we <laughs> we have to try and diagnose it ourselves like <laughs> how has he achieved that um yeah. and sometimes you know sometimes it amazes us the performance the game seems to be holding up quite well in some circumstances in terms of the performance when people are pushing it like your um your pixel, your weird pixel machine that you did the other day. I was quite happy that that held up okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot going on there under the hood. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're we're getting we're we're constantly amazed by the community, genuinely, and uh, it's uh, just a constant source of joy for us to see those creations. We we just hope that we can grow the community and see more of it and get more interaction between people in the community because I love seeing the community interacting together. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of a, a small community at the moment. You, you you're not making any money yet. <laughs> no, no yes. absolutely not. Um, and um but i think uh you know i've talked to some of the um youtubers and they're they're waiting for the the game to get to a certain level before they start featuring it in their channels and yeah right you cool. know once they see that okay the game has this and this and this you know um i think multiplayer working well is going to be a key yeah. Yeah, and we, we, we're going to do more investment in the multiplayer starting next sprint as well. So we're going to, um, at the moment it's uh, it's gotten into a stage where it's not very playable right now, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we're planning to turn that around during next sprint. So because um, the underlying technology is there, is just there's a there's a few key major issues that we need to solve in order to kind of get it so that it begins to become playable. We've done a lot of work with the new parts. Mm -hmm. They're all they're all rigged for multiplayer and to be able to do kind of unique things with multiplayer wiring of gameplay parts. So I'm really keen to expose the multiplayer a bit by improving it just because we're keen as a group to see what the community does because we again we hope to be surprised about what the community does do with the multiplayer features because mm -hmm. yes. at the moment it's all it's all theory okay is there <laughs> um i think i remember seeing there are plans at some point to have a, a server that people can log into again it's like a it's it's maximum freedom so 
what freedoms do you want? I want to be able to play privately with somebody locally in my house. I want to be able to play privately with a bunch of guys um, across the internet. I want to be able to maybe create a server and host that and have that only invite groups of players into it. And I want to be, have strangers be able to be play on a, fairly on a dedicated server in a game that I've made that everybody's enjoying. Mm. So the ultimate goal and the way we've designed the technology is that it can support all of those things. Mm. I think it's a long way off, you know, yeah. co okay. covering all those bases. Um, so at the moment, I'd be patient, and, and it's not like we're going to have dedicated servers overnight, but it, 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 it's a key aspect of making games. I mean, I think for us, it, it would be... We, it would be foolish to block off any potential future type of game that you would want to make within reason mm -hmm. um what about um the workshop we can save worlds to a workshop are, are we going to be able to save like one vehicle to a workshop at some point yeah yeah we've, we're, we're planning to look upgrade the workshop so that it's more like a toy box so that you can even have you know like in the inventory at the moment where you've got blocks mm -hmm. and you can place blocks and you can have them on your hot bar yep. ideally you can have a whole inventory of prefabs and you can have them on your hot bar mm -hmm. and then you can just drag them in so if you've got certain rigged up things that you use commonly in games like i've got i've got three timers and three center hud blocks that go ready, steady, go, mm -hmm. and I use that, and I use that quite a lot uh, to save me time wiring up every time. I can put it in my toy box. So the prefab workshop would be like upgraded so that it, it it can contain very small things, and you can just add it to your toolbox, and then it's just there for you to place. Okay. Yeah. I'd I... love, I'd love to have a also a paper trail so that the manual requirement to um credit the guy mm. was was sort of handled somehow so that you know it was always clear who made the original prefab and and who had contributed to the overall content how to do that in a neat way i don't know yeah i don't know how you would do that i mean if somebody brings a creation into their world and then adds a block and then saves it how I don't see how you could do anything about that. Uh, I think at some point you have to trust trust that, people, trust people that they're going to do what they say, and then have the the other players can shame them if they, you know, misbehave. Yeah, yeah. The power of the community. Yeah. What's the your team going to be working on in the coming months? So the big ones. The big one is to begin to introduce character vulnerabilities. So I spoke about losing health, taking damage, um, taking damage by falling, taking damage by hitting, being hit by objects, mm. taking damage by being crushed, taking mm -hmm. damage by crashing a vehicle. Um, take it. Then we want to introduce ways that you can damage the player, like intentionally, you know, with laser guns and laser beams and uh -huh. th those kind of things then we want to expand that by introducing ai so the initial place we would go is you would get a um current thinking is there's like a block which is like an ai uh, machine driver like a block that is a uh, an ai machine uh -huh. And that allows and that allows you to wire it to the inputs of other blocks too, and it acts like a player driving forwards, backwards, up, down, fire, and you can wire that to any kind of physical machine you want, whether it's a car or even just an object that moves around. Mm -hmm. And then we have a set set of blocks that are the brain of the AI, which you can wire into that. So the blocks would be like patrol or follow a path or wander or chase player and so these blocks are telling the doing the steering and then your machine is doing the physics mm -hmm. if it has if it has laser guns on it it's doing the firing 
and if the player is the target for the brain, then it's doing the firing at the player. So these these AI blocks would let you drive the machines and have them shoot at you, maybe a little robots or cars or tanks or whatever you want, mm-hmm. or sentry turrets or, or or and then the idea would be to introduce um, guns to the player so that you can damage those robots that are trying to shoot you, um, wow. or or damage each other. Yeah. In multiple- and then the idea is for us to expand that to introduce play, uh, other characters, NPC characters into games. So you can put other characters into your games and then control those with the same AI blocks. Mm. And then the next step after that would be for us to then allow the community via workshop to introduce any character they wish. Um Wow. And this would, you would need the skill to do that. So you might, uh, for example, go on Turbo Squid, download a character, fill in a few data files, publish it to Workshop, and then other game crafters would be able to download those characters via Workshop and put those in and rig them up with AI. So the game could then feature any character, monsters, oh wow, and all of that kind of stuff too. Holy cow! That there's a long, very exciting. There's a long way to go. That's it. Sounds complicated, especially like pathfinding. I don't know how. You, um, well, you know more than I do about that sort of thing. Yeah, we, I mean the pathfinding and things like that. We have experience with. I mean, there's common ways to do it in games. Obviously, a bit challenging in our case because the player can make very arbitrary things. And you know, how do you pathfind around those? Mm-hmm. But. Um, the more of a challenge is how do you expose that level of complexity through blocks mm-hmm. to players that want to make games and that's the key challenge that's the key goal for gamecraft is it's make exposing that power to players yeah what about uh the current landscaping um it seems like it's a little difficult, it is difficult, to make a landscape that looks realistic and that you can drive around in easily. Uh, yeah. Is there any plans to improve on that? Uh, we don't have, we don't have like solid ideas for how we would improve on that yet, mm-hmm. but we definitely have the same feeling that it is both difficult to create substantial uh, uh, natural looking landscapes Mm -hmm. and it's also difficult to uh, make them efficiently because it's very time consuming Mm. Um, and it's also like you say to make landscapes for good that are good for vehicles to drive on like road systems and things like that so we definitely acknowledge the issue and we certainly want to address it Mm. um just not in the immediate future. Yeah, it's not top of the list simply because right now we want to just expose more of the fun, more stuff that makes games fun. That's where you okay. want the more game the, elements. Yeah, more game elements. Like uh, that's where you your character can die, your character can lose health, your character can get shot by lasers, your character can fire lasers. Your, uh-huh. You you can fly spaceships, so you can yeah. pick up pickups and what, what about uh, experience points and leveling up is that something maybe i think the thing about experience points and leveling up is it's game specific right yeah you, you know, there's many games that don't have that and there's games that wouldn't work without it mm-hmm. so i think the key thing is we must expose the power to do that kind of stuff mm-hmm. in your game if you want that in your game right but it shouldn't be a global generic system that is in all games. Mm-hmm. Let's see. How about uh, chests, at where and and like limiting the number of items that a player would be able to use. Yes. Uh, yeah. Like definitely. That? Definitely chests and like an in-game inventory, so that you could find objects within a game, have them in your inventory, have another place in the game where you needed to use these objects Mm -hmm. or perhaps these objects were weapons or ammo as well 
so the inventories could play a role or, or talk to an npc who gives you a quest do the quest come back to talk to the npc the npc says well done here's a special item the item's now in your inventory so now you can use the inventory item to progress mm -hmm. another this here's another really exciting thing we want to do in future is to allow you to portal from game to game and to have data that is persistent between the transition so imagine you created a hub with say four doors okay and I, and only the first door was unlocked mm -hmm. and you can have the player okay enter first door level one right. and that actually portals to another game that you've made ah which is just level one and when you complete level one you can pass the information back to the first game that you have now completed level one in order to open the second door. Yeah. So, and, so that would uh, limit the amount of like lag because there's too much activity in happening level. in one level to, to try to have all the levels in one game. And it allows you to have an infinitely sized game. Yeah. And it allows the community to, co community to collaborate in a unique way too. Mm. And, and the other thing is to allow you to have that data save for the user if they log off so they can continue your game from where they left off mm. nice. so those kind of things are quite important too wow um i had some uh other players asking me about variable system of variables arrays and uh, strings and string inputs, and I'm not quite sure what they meant, but maybe you know what they're talking about. I think, well, I think we certainly there'll be variables, um, so they're coming. They'll be we're starting to do them next sprint, if I can remember rightly. So you'll be able to store numbers, and obviously with the mass box, you can already manipulate those numbers. Um, you can choose when to store them. Mm -hmm. um, the um, Obviously, many of the blocks are already take variables as inputs. So, um, an array uh, fundamentally is like a sequence of variables. I mean, you can put many of those down as blocks. Yeah. Um, but we're always open to. I think the key thing for us is for a user to say, "I really want to make this really fun aspect of my game, but I can't at the moment with the existing blocks." And for us then to go, "Okay, well, we need to give you a block so you can do that." Mm -hmm. oh, the, the other side might be this thing I keep doing over and over requires me to put down a hundred blocks and wire them all together. And if I had this one block that did half of this stuff just built into one block and enough players need that block, we should add that one too. Okay. So kind of an efficiency aspect to it as well. Any, any games you're playing? Do you have time to play games besides you, you, the ones you develop? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for Blizzard games. Yeah. Um, so I play them all. Um, I actually just started playing some of those with my son. Started playing Diablo with my son, Diablo 3. Mm. Just getting him on a server with me. Because it's very simple. It's kind of click and, and progress. So that's been fun. Um, I obviously often just play games for pure research. They're not necessarily ones I want to spend lots of time with, but um, mm -hmm. I want to learn about. Yeah. Um, I play quite a lot of games on... I'm, I'm a big fan of Supercell. Um, that's just from a mobile phone perspective. Okay. Um, but I, 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 I just like to pick on games when they come by. Uh, and I, like, I love it. I, I, I typically I'll play loads of games for like five minutes and drop them very quickly. I think a lot of people are like this. And then one game will hook me and I will absolutely just not leave it alone forever until I finished it and I can't enjoy it anymore. Mm -hmm. So I've recently just gone back to playing StarCraft 2, weirdly. Yeah, which is because I only played it briefly when it came out. Oh, I don't know why, and I've just felt like I really need to go to, back to that one and just get it more. Okay, but I go I go through waves. I've been went through a MOBA phase, and you know, 
question is about like a regular uh, what goes on in a regular team meeting? How do, how do those, what does that look like? Well, at the moment, it looks very different. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we do a stand-up meeting every day, every morning. Okay. So 10, o'clo- 10 o'clock sharp, everybody has to be on the meeting. And you got to stand so that everybody's you gotta efficient. Because st- <laughs> every- right. nobody wants Have to you- keep standing. That's right. And if you if you start to rest against the desk, then you get told off. It's like, hey, stand mm. <laughs> in a in a fun way. Um, they so that's one meeting that happens very regularly every day. We do these meetings that we call um, tech meetings. So at the start of a new sprint, which we're just about to start. So after this release goes out, which we're just on the last few bugs now. So it will be it will be probably ready tomorrow but we don't like to release on friday okay <laughs> it can ruin your weekend because you need to be able to fix to the be bugs there. yeah if there if bugs come up yeah i mean if you find something really crazy that we didn't spot we want to be able to jump on that immediately and get it fixed and not do so, that on a saturday yeah friday's never a good day okay so um so you've got uh, the launch coming out straight after the launch what we'll do is we'll go through all the features that have been designed for next sprint and we'll sit down in small groups of the people who are working on each thing and we'll go over the thing and they will uh, come up with issues and we'll discuss the issues to to try to ensure the feature is going to be better when it's created they will then go away and do like a technical study of how they will go about developing the feature they'll then come back with an estimate for how long it will take we will then uh, schedule it in and we'll then juggle things to actually lock the sprint in and then once it's locked in we're all beavering away on the stuff to try and get it ready for the launch date normally in about three weeks time after that and so between those you've just got to stand up every day and then just odd ad hoc meetings that you'd get in any office, just grabbing people and okay. having a chat about this and that. Occasionally there's an argument. Seb's quite a fiery character, so, <laughs> you know, he's a fiery Italian, so, you know, he can spike a few uh, heated arguments sometimes. But it's all because we're passionate about what we're doing. And mm. Good. Well, um Mark, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk with me about uh, GameCraft and Free Jam and and everything. Um, it's been a pleasure. Um, thank you. Well, let me say that um, thank you for all the support and advice and feedback you've given us. And um, I really hope you get loads and loads of subscribers because uh, I think you've been a great guy to watch and I loved seeing your channel develop. Um okay. And I think you're offering something unique to watch. So I really hope you you you, you grow and grow and grow and hmm. and we can we can grow with you. And it'd be uh, nice if we're still talking in five years' time, and you're you're this mega superstar YouTuber, and we're uh, hopefully doing well with GameCraft and have a huge community. And it'd be nice to maybe hook up for a beer and talk back about this time. <laughs> I'll get on my private jet and come over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I I wish you uh, plenty of success. Um, so, so thank you so much and uh, have a, have a pleasant weekend. You too. All right. Bye bye. See you later. Bye. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. If you did, give it a like. Consider subscribing to my channel and ringing the bell. If you didn't see those previous uh, videos, go check those out. If you want to see more of Mark Simmons talking about GameCraft, uh, APOC, another YouTuber, interviewed Mark about six months ago. So I'm going to leave a link to that interview in the description of this video. Let me hear whatever comments you got in the comments section. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.